Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're in Washington, D.C. It's a beautiful afternoon and we're checking out the Specialized Turbo Vado 4.0. The last time I saw these bikes, I was hanging out in Northern California, they were having a special event and it was just amazing to me, all the technology that they've packed into these bikes. It's a really great platform if you're someone who's a little bit sportier, maybe you wanna do some commuting but you want the assist of uh, electric bike, something with pedal assist. This is a speed pedal X, so it can go up to 28 miles per hour, which means you'll get there a little bit faster. But it's set up to be very efficient. It's very compliant, especially in this high step version. They do have a step through as well, which to me is more of a mid step. It doesn't go super, super low, but back to that compliant, like rigid feeling frame, really nice. This thing is just, it, it you know, when I'm riding it around, sometimes I get on e-bikes and they feel kind of heavy and the weight distribution is, is a little bit off and everything. This one, you know, they position that battery right there in the down tube. It's, it's integrated, really beautiful, matches the paint and everything on both of the colors. They've got this nice metallic crimson red and then one that's kind of a gray. Um, and then the motor, it's right there in that bottom bracket. It's a motorized bottom bracket. It's a Broza drive system. This is the T and it puts out gosh, between 250 and 520 watts, up to about 72 Newton meters of torque, fairly high uh, pedal cadence matching, and just an excellent, quiet, smooth feeling. It's measuring your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque, and the way they've got this rear wheel speed uh, calibrated, you can see down here, maybe you can see that little magnet right there, it's on that little plastic piece mounted to the disc brake rotor. So it's tucked in, it's not like one of those magnets that's out here that can get bumped off track. So it just feels like solid. Everything on this bike is tight. And I like that, it's not rattling around a whole lot. It's not like the frame is flexing. That's what I'm trying to get at. So when you're going at higher speeds, when you're someone who's a little bit more active, you can see the geometry here, you're leaned forward a little bit. It's nice to have stuff that's not gonna rattle around and flex a whole lot. You can see that here in this alloy encased headlight. It is adjustable. You can aim it up or down. And I think it's like 300 lumen. It's, it's very light. It's very bright, I should say. I'm going to turn that on later and show you. We've got a suspension fork here with somewhat limited travel. It's about 50 millimeters, but it's highly, highly adjustable. So this is SR Suntour NCX. It's E25. So I think it's like e-bike rated. And then MCD, multi-circuit damping. That's talking about this compression clicker. Right, so you can, there's a lot of fine tuning you can do. You can lock it all the way out if you really want uh, that efficiency. But then down here, we've got rebound adjust, which I'm not used to seeing on a, a spring fork. Usually that's on an air fork. So that means when it compresses down, you can control like how quickly that happens or rebounds how quickly that happens. That's the multi-circuit. And then over here we have preload. So you can preload the spring if you're someone who's a little bit heavier and you don't wanna just use up all that spring capacity right when you hop on the bike. You wanna save some of that for hitting the bumps. I'm a lightweight rider, so I tend to like dial that rebound out so I can get like a nice cushy ride for myself. So plenty of adjustability. It's a fairly nice suspension fork, but limited travel purposely because again, it is like an urban bike. It's something you'd ride mostly on streets or bike paths and stuff. I was impressed though with the tire that they chose. Specialized has a background in, in making awesome tires. They call this the Trigger 700 by 47 C. So it's roughly 28 inch diameter on this. A little bit wider means you're gonna get nice rolling momentum, a lower attack angle. So you're gonna span cracks and bumps. And then the volume on this is, is fairly high. Okay, see, it's, it's not like a super narrow road tire. You're gonna get some vibration dampening and comfort just from these tires. And then they've got that soft tread where it's fairly fine in the middle for efficiency. And then a little bit of grip on the side. We actually rode across some dirt trails. I might show you that later during the ride test. But of course, they've got the reflective sidewall stripe. We've got reflective stickers on the rims. We've got eyelets on these rims for extra strength. Reflective stickers on the fenders. These fenders are awesome, so they're aluminum alloy, very sturdy. I would kind of call them tubular because they curve on the edges and it just, it adds strength. And then there's this plastic channel in the front and an extra long extended rubber piece down here, right? So when you're pedaling, a lot of times your feet will actually get splashed and your ankles and stuff, unless you have a fender that goes really, really long and actually flares out a little bit. So you're keeping dry, but they did some testing in their wind tunnel and when the wheels are spinning really quickly, it sort of creates a, a wind channel here where it pushes water forward and out and it would get in your face. So they created this little 
plastic piece in there that that pushes it out to the side so it doesn't come up and hit you in the face i thought that was amazing i was really impressed with the video same thing in the rear there's those reflectors i was talking about before we've got integrated rear light as well and then another little rubberized end piece so that could get bumped or kicked and it won't mess up the fender i love the rack rack time fairly narrow perfect for panniers and they've got a little bungee loop here too so you could just use something like that if you had really small cargo to put on i tend to put a, a pannier bag on the left hand side the non-drive side hang it down there maybe put your charger in it they do give you an excellent charger it's got the magnetic energy bus rosenberger adapter magnetic so it can just pop right off without tipping the bike or getting bent this is like 1.9 pounds, four amps. So four amps is a little bit faster. It's nice because Specialized has a couple different battery options. The one that comes with this bike is 36 volt, 14 amp hour. So 504 watt hours, lithium ion. And they told me they use, you know, Samsung, LG, Panasonic cells, good stuff, right? So it's a little bit more reliable. They tend to be very long lasting and very lightweight, right? So coming back to the weight on this bike, about 52.9 pounds, this one right here. We're on the size large diamond frame, which is perfect for someone who wants that really efficient, like kind of a rigid, high performance design. That's what I'm keep coming back to that with the handlebars and everything, just the way that this is set up. But they do have some other touch points here that are optimized for comfort. This saddle feels very good to me. We've got these ergonomic but lightly ergonomic grips they are locking and again body geometry that specialized thing we talked about the tires and stuff being kind of comfort oriented 15 to 75 psi i said 15 50 50 okay so you know again that's a little bit higher pressure but when you have that much air volume and then that lower attack angle ends up feeling decent 30.9 millimeters on that seat post it's a rigid post but you could get a suspension post if you wanted connect formerly body float they have one that's really nice a good option for someone who's like a high performance rider spend a little bit more money on that and then of course the suspension fork right but these wheels are attached in a really rigid like performance sort of way as well this is a 15 millimeter through axle on the front with a five millimeter hex bolt pattern and in the back 12 millimeter through axle 148 millimeter hub spacing which is like boost so to me that was really interesting i'm not used to seeing that and maybe it's just so they could fit this wider 10 sprocket cassette we've got 11 to 42 teeth pretty great range you definitely want that for climbing but also hitting and maintaining those top speeds 40 tooth chain ring with a nice plastic i would call this like it, it's kind of a chain ring protector but it almost acts as a guide when you see how close the chain goes to the frame and then that plastic outer piece it's going to protect my pants but it's going to keep that chain from bouncing off track which is again very nice at high speed they even have narrow wide chain ring pattern and this is an aluminum alloy chain ring versus steel so maybe a little bit lighter coming back to performance narrow wide really locks into those links so it doesn't get bounced off track when you're riding at high speed or doing a little bit of off-road which i keep going back to this performed really well off-road a little bit of vibration like i might have lowered the psi or adjusted the suspension fork perfectly for myself but it performed pretty well right out of the box so coming to the rear derailleur shimano dior it does have the shadow plus clutch in the up position, it reduces kind of that chain bounce. This is something you see on a lot of mountain bikes and stuff, but in the lower position, it's a lot it's a lot looser, right? So shifting might be a little bit easier. You can take that wheel off much easier and just do some chain maintenance. This does have a missing link chain as well, so you can take that off without tools if you need to, if you need to do some trail maintenance. And on that note, we're talking about off-road stuff. This has black belt puncture protection built in. So just, gosh, everything. They just pack so much stuff into this. I'm gonna give you a few more examples of that. Of course, we have a clear plastic slap guard to protect that nice paint. We've got two bottle cage bosses, one on the down tube and one on the top tube, which would be perfect for maybe a folding lock. We even have some bosses right here on the seat stays. So you could add like an Abus Cafe lock or something that would lock the rear wheel. <sighs> Boy, and then we keep coming around to the front of the bike. Actually, while we're down here, I wanna talk about these pedals. These are, uh, they're kind of this plastic composite with sandpaper grip kind of unique a lot of times i see a smaller cage style pedal which might be sort of lightweight but they can get bent up and kind of scratched and sharp so this is a nice little uh, upgrade the crank arms are going to be specific to the frame size and there are six frame sizes between the mid step and high step so they're just really awesome chance to dial this in depending on your body size okay and you know being able to go into a shop and test ride these that's another thing specialized only really sells through shops 
and they're like highly trained because there's so much to look at. Internally routed cables, beautiful, right? Look at the lines on this bike. It's just, it's just fantastic. And there's even like this kind of vent system going on for the motor at the bottom with the specialized branding, of course. It's definitely one of those like premium brands that just everywhere, specialized, specialized, it's all over the place. And when you're going fast, you also need good brakes. So these are two finger adjustable reach levers, Shimano hydraulic disc, and they do go with a larger 180 millimeter rotor up front, 160 in the rear. So as you stop, your weight shifts forward. You need a little bit more you know, like leverage over the big wheel. You wanna put that on the front wheel, especially if there's some dive, if you got that suspension fork open. So I like that. I like that they went with uh, a larger disc rotor in the front. And then they've got an adjustable length kickstand here. This is another like custom part. I haven't seen this kickstand used on other bikes, but they do have a 40 millimeter bolt spacing. So you could swap it, but it's adjustable length too. So it's already a pretty good setup that way. I'm here with Charlie McCormick and he's got a bike shop called Electricity Cycles in Washington, DC. How's it going, buddy? How you doing, Court? Dude, I'm fantastic. This bike is so much to say, so much to say, and we've got the 2020 version right here, right, which has the, what was it called with that display? The TCDW display, Turbo Connect display. Fantastic, fantastic. And that's the big upgrade for 2020 because it does have mission control, Bluetooth, smartphone application readiness. That's correct. Okay, and then there's a slight difference on that rear light. It's just a plastic light. Um, I think this was, was this say like a Trace Mini. I haven't, you know, it looks nice and stuff. It's positioned well. It's gonna stay out of the way of the bags. If we look at the 2019 model, which you happen to have right over here, that's the beauty of this, right? We were talking about frame sizes and being able to try them. Slightly different color options from 2019 and a slightly different display. This is the Blocks display. It does have a nice little USB, like a micro USB. I can't get it off with my gloves. There we go. Um, so you could potentially tap into that if you've got yourself like a, maybe a smartphone you wanna use for GPS or whatever. The Mission Control app would be a great example of that. And a slightly different Supernova 3 LED rear light. But otherwise, we didn't really see that many differences. Nope, not a lot of changes from 2019 to 2020. And apparently, if you do go for 20, you know, you've got some inventory of both. Absolutely. If someone says, I like that color better, or I like that lighter, maybe even the display, this one's slightly cheaper, and the difference, the price difference is enough that they could upgrade the display later. They can. Now with the TCD-W, that one's not really removable. It isn't. It's uh, more like fully fixed. Yep, it's fixed in place uh, and wired. I think there's, uh, it's super reliable with the, you know, there's no, I don't know if you've heard about display problems from a lot of other manufacturers, but that connection between the display head yeah. and the mount has been the cause of a lot of frustration in the industry. Huh. Okay. So that, so there are some, you know, pros and cons. I love how beautiful, I mean, look how small it is. It looks like a, re a regular cycle computer. It does. Right. And it's discreet. This is a company specialized. They were one of the early uh, brands to bring in electric bikes to North America. That's right. Especially at the speed Pedelec, like high performance end of things. Um, and I just feel like their equipment has always been refined in such a way that it's like purist. Like you kind of look at this and it, it looks like a bike. It blends in, it performs really well, even if you aren't using pedal assist. And at 53 pounds, that's really not too bad nope. with metal fenders, a rack, lights. Like, and that's, that's just me talking. I've reviewed hundreds and hundreds of bikes. <laughs> so when I look at this bike, I'm like, okay, it's light, it's fast, it's sporty. And, you know, and that's, that's really what I'm getting out of it. So we're gonna get into the battery and some other stuff in just a minute, but I'm looking over your shoulder and I, where are we? Cause we went on a fun ride today and like there's some history here. Yes, there is. This is, uh, this is uh, Fort Reno. It's part of a circle of forts surrounding the old DC perimeter mm -hmm. that was to protect it from invasion by the Confederates. Wow, yeah. wow, so it's so cool to have history like that. And you know, there's some really nice little bike paths and we're having a blast today. Yeah. Coming back to that commuter application, no quick release on the wheels or the seat binder right here. And that's, I think that's probably done purposely. For theft protection, that's, that. that's where they've done the same thing with the through axles. By having to have an Allen key, you can't have somebody quickly come up and just be able to take your wheel or take your seat. Now, what about actually locking it up? Because some people, this is still, it's a bike. It's a full-size bike. You maybe have to lock the frame off. You take the battery in with you, but if you wanted to lock the wheels or something, you right. have to run a cable or what's what are the options? I mean, you've got a couple different options. Uh, you've already pointed out, I think, that it has the bosses 
for the uh, for the frame style lock from Abus, uh -huh. which is not very common. I mean, not not most American manufacturers don't do that. The other thing you can do here is uh, replace the through axles with a uh, it's a company called Hex Locks, okay. and they can become almost a locking through axle. Wow! Uh, so you don't have to mess with. Traditionally, the standard way is to just have a cable or a chain that goes through both wheels and then you lock up. It's a little, you know, extra work and you might not do it that one time where you really need to. Oh, yeah. And then you, you come back and, and your wheels are gone. So having the thing that's everything secure and nobody can mess with it, that's a good peace of mind. It is. It really, it's cool to hear your, your feedback. That I got the, the keys for the bike and it comes with this like key code card and that allows you to match the key to that Abus, that's you know, right. frame lock or maybe the folding lock that we mentioned. Can you show me sure. battery removal? Cause that's another area we were talking. Oh, by the way, before you do that, look at this, they got a little door, a magnetic door with a leash. And so, you know, coming back to that magnetic charging interface, it'll just pop right off. It's not down here by the crank arms. It's not gonna get like, there's no collision or snagging happen. That's a really good position and for the lock and so many other companies just kind of, they put it down here cause they're using like aftermarket stuff. It, this is all custom from Specialized. Plastic on the battery casing, casing instead of aluminum alloy. But this is a hydroform frame with smooth welds. That's another, there's just so much to say. Okay, so that's covered, not gonna lose it. Go ahead and do the lock thing. You don't have to stoop as well. That's what's really nice with a lot of the battery plugs down there, there's like, annealing and stooping it's a little thing yeah but being able to do it standing up is just nice thank you for yeah i mean you're adding a lot of insights here so old we, man <laughs> <laughs> just, so i'm getting the, there <laughs> so to make it release you you uh i think i just it it'll uh you turn it until it 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 um ooh, there, there we, we go. go there we go unlocked and then it slides out sort of sideways this is an advantage, particularly on the step through frames, yeah. because you don't have as much room. Like a lot of these batteries would mount like this. This kind of goes in on the side. From the side. And it allows you to have a little bit more uh, of a sleek. So I was gonna try to get this out, but I have gloves on. It's so slippery. We we hold the battery up for us. Two hand operation. It's about 6.2 pounds for this battery. And they do have a higher capacity one that's like 600 watt hours replacement pack is i think 900 dollars. Yep. but do they color match them because these are so, so nice yeah, that's another part if you have to order your color match cover for okay. your battery so they stock most you know your dealer will stock a color match cover if you wanted to do that i guess you could also go two-tone if you really wanted to that would be cool throw it away. <laughs> yeah i get it. but that's one of the trade-offs here with these custom batteries maybe you have two specialized bikes with that similar interface whether it's this capacity the 504 or the 600 watt hour you know it it might not match going between the two bikes this is what it looks like inside the frame and they've got this little metal plug thing right there and then there's a metal plate on the end of this um let me see what else i don't want to drop it because my gloves but yeah it's got some feedback about the battery don't get it wet and stuff and then there's that same magnetic charging interface um, on the battery so you can charge it off the bike if you want because it's that's connected store these things in a cool dry location okay if you can help it extreme heat will degrade the cells and i hear if you're not going to use it for a while you want to store it at like half or or fairly full you don't want it to drain all the way down that's the big takeaway that's exactly right sound good yep okay so charlie's going to put this back on this is one of the areas of the bike especially when it's new that's it's kind of a gripe for me or just a consideration he's going to put it in lining up the bottom perfectly because it is plastic so if you're trying to force this it's part of the lightweight right. design if you try to put it in there the right way you could damage something so just take your time and gently put it in there when you get it in See how it made that clicking noise? Yeah. But it's not really in. That can throw some people off, especially at first. You kind of have to give it a little a little whack. And now it's, it's in it and now it's in. Now okay. It's in. Perfect. But you have to test it by giving it a little tug to make sure it's actually in there. Thank you for that advice. That's it's such a it's a tragedy if you it's like start riding and then it <laughs> flops out. And they're supposed to be fairly durable, but yeah, good to double check. Uh, we were talking about the gears and stuff before. I like that this bike has a two-way shifter. So see, I can pull it or I can push it on the high gear and then I can do three steps on the low. So it's a sportier shifter. It's got the little window and stuff and the reach adjust on those brake levers and stuff. Now coming to the display, we've got set plus minus and light like button pad that's really easy to reach while you're riding and a bell but 
you can't actually turn the bike on from up here. You know, there, there's a left and a right button here as well. You have to go down here. Um, it's fairly reachable, but if you're on the bike and you're like ready to go, you're like, oh yeah, you kind of have to bend down a little bit, press that for a couple seconds, it lights up. So 20% increments right there, five dots. The display, again, it's really compact. It looks like a standard cycle computer. The default menu is one. So see where it, see how it says one right there? This is page one and there are five pages and you can cycle between them by pressing left or right so if i click the left button here now i'm on page five i click the right button a couple times page two right so it lets you go through them set it just goes to the left like or to the right so it goes from two to three to four five and then it circles back around so i'm just trying to give you a, a quick lay of the land here uh, press the plus button and hold it and we'll get walk mode going which is kind of nice if you get a flat tire or you're in a park and you just you don't feel comfortable um, pushing the bike you want a little help with that 52 pounds hold the minus button for a couple seconds it clears the distance the trip meter and then down here on the headlights i think they come on by default but if you press it you can turn them on and off which is really nice i think the older turbos some of the really older ones they you couldn't turn the light off like it would be charging and the light would be on it be kind of annoying so i like that they've got a little light button there now okay so back to the display i guess i'm just going to run through the, the readouts speed it's a miles per hour but we can change kilometers per hour plus or minus go through these three little blocks so you can go off and now it's just a bike with lights which is nice and then up to three you're going to get the highest energy output and i think it's 380 percent relative to pedal input of the rider so but not bad right it's not a pretty bad. sporty motor uh, we've got a battery percentage which i love because that's much more precise than just like these blocks but the blocks that they do have they're 10 of them so that's pretty great that's like 10 percent steps instead of 20% steps down here much more precise uh, clock right there distance so that's like trip dis or um yeah like this this trip how far we've gone a little bit under a mile if we click to the next screen or hit that right button we've got a pedal cadence so that's really cool and I think the motor does support up to 120 rpm it's definitely a faster motor sportier so you're not going to struggle if you downshift on your way into a hill and we've got timer down there the next one, it has a heart rate monitor. You can sync that up to the Mission Control app and then power in watts that you're generating, uh, kilocalories, and then max speed and odometer. Okay, so there's a lot of, it's kind of the same feedback you get from other displays and they're just packing a lot in with that set button. It just cycles through it all. This is somewhat adjustable. You can, you can angle it, but you can't take it off and it is backlit. So when we've got the lights on, you can read it that way a little bit, a little bit better. Now, there are a couple of other settings. If we hold the left and right for a minute it'll go through and it'll start to blink and then we go next and it'll blink and then you press the two in and, and you can adjust those things there's just really too much here to go into on in this review they have a, a pretty good you know manual and stuff and then i've listed all the different functions back in the written review as well as the length the width the height the minimum saddle height all the stuff that i do each time and i welcome your feedback on this review or in the forums and stuff just because you know me you might be able to help some people if there's something i got wrong or missed but we're doing our best here for you guys. So that's kind of it. I would love to maybe just see the Mission Control app real sure. quick, Charlie, because he's got it on his Android phone. I think it's also for iOS, yeah? It is, it's on both platforms. Okay, sweet. So we spent some time back at the store and we already synced it up. We, we pulled up the app on the phone and then we connected to this bike using the serial number and it gave us a pin and we put the pin in and it synced. So what are the different uh, options here? So first thing you see is the course of the battery percentage, which is the same. You have Let's Ride, Tune, My Ride, Settings, and Diagnose. So if something was wrong, you would be able to press it here. Yeah. Uh, but I guess most people are gonna be looking at at tuning uh, tuning your ride is really the... So this is where you're able to, to change all the different uh, settings for each of the modes. Okay. So if you wanted to make your eco mode, you know, stronger, but less peak power, for instance, you could do it there hmm. and change around. So this really... It allows you to, to dial it into exactly what you want. Okay. Uh, so other things you can change is, um, let's go to, let's ride. So it has, this is all your ride stats. You can check, uh, start your ride here and it'll start the timer and do mm -hmm. the distance and stuff as well. Uh, but smart control is really the... Uh, sort creme of, de la creme. It's, it's really the, <laughs> the feature that, that we've all been waiting for in an in a e-bike uh, control system because here you can choose how much uh, capacity you want to be remaining in your battery after your ride and you can set the distance for however you, much distance you think you're going to ride 
and then it will automatically budget your power. Now this is really cool because one of the menus that's not present on the display is range. So some other systems will say, at the current rate of pedal and battery capacity, you can go another 10 miles. This one doesn't do, they take the reverse stance. They're like, how far do you wanna go and how much battery do you wanna have left when you get there? And there's a map feature in there. There's some other stuff, but you know, again, I'm trying to be efficient here with you guys. We're already uh, spending so much time. There's so much to talk about on the bike. There's some great resources in the specialized website that show that more, but the app is really cool. If you mount it up here, you'd be able to navigate all over town, but you wouldn't be able to charge your phone off the battery. That's one of the trade-offs from the block system. But I really, I think it put out like five volt, 500 milliamp, and you need at least an amp to charge an iOS device. So was it really that useful? I don't know. And people have battery backpacks for their phones. So I want to be fair, right? Like right. no range estimate on that thing. The battery, like, you know, trying to get that lined up. Also the Brosa motor, while it does measure several signals and it's super smooth, it's got like a Gates carbon belt drive inside. So it's, it, it's not quite as like zippy sounding or feeling as some of the other ones where it's just gears on gears. Right there's no there's no shift detection though okay and most of the other big companies don't have shift detection you're relying on pedal torque so just like a regular bicycle when you're going to shift gears it's best to ease off a little bit so you're not straining the chain in the sprockets but those are the three kind of like you know if you're considering different bikes and you i think i'm ready to hop on this thing and uh, you can grab your gloves and we'll just go for a little ride back that way we are on grass and it's kind of bumpy so when i ride you'll be able to get a feel for how quiet this is even on bumpy terrain I'm just gonna start pedaling. I am in the highest level of assist. Look at that. Even with that extra long fender in the front, it's just so quiet. And it's a speed pedelec, right? So we can get going 28 miles per hour. It's pretty impressive, feeling very stable. There we go. And the dirt. That's where those like hybrid tires really, really shine. Okay guys, from here you can see that 40 tooth chain ring. Again, aluminum alloy with those narrow wide teeth and that plastic guard right there. So it's a pretty good setup. Depending on the size of frame, you'll get a 170 or 175 length um, crank arms, which is nice. And I'm gonna be pedaling along probably in the highest level of assist because I want you to be able to see how responsive it is. It's, it's fairly responsive. It's relatively quiet smooth and there are those vents and kind of maybe heat dissipation design on the bottom but charlie was telling me he's like power washed these and been just fine that it's it's fairly water resistant i think broza says like ip67 rated so against like ingress protection against dust and water and stuff like that so i i tend to hose stuff down gently or use maybe an air compressor first for dust um, but apparently it's it's worked out pretty well for him um, love that they've got the slap guard there and i do have the clutch that shadow plus clutch in the up position so it's tight so we're gonna get less chain bounce i'm gonna pedal along at different speeds and shift gears and let you enjoy the the view Looks like I kicked the camera out of position a little bit, but that was fast. I was really spinning at the end there, above 120 RPM, and the motor is really sticking with me. Uh, it seems like maybe they they upgraded the the Broza T for 2019, 2020 because it's it's just it's working really well. Um, this has been one of my favorite motors, by the way, just in terms of the size. It weighs about 7.5 pounds. I weighed one in the shop. They had it outside of a bike. Um, pretty impressive. I think it has a fairly narrow Q factor as well, which keeps the chain in line. It's just a, it's a good setup. Now I'm gonna go off road with it. No problem, that was the same hill Charlie climbed earlier. And I was having fun getting the front wheel off the ground a little bit. But no problem, didn't have to get out of the saddle or anything. It just performs great. 
You know, compared to the Euro specs where it's class three, they used to have a, like a mirror on the side and then a brake light integration, but that's not a requirement in the United States. So they've kind of dropped that. Beautiful. Just super, super smooth, super like, yeah, I don't know how, it could kind of like a stiff feeling, but the power activation is really smooth. And climbing, do you think we could climb that? Do you want to try to climb that little hill right there, Charlie? This is a very little hill. We have a big hill we can climb. Yeah? Yep, it's on the other side. Okay, let's do it. Okay guys, we got the Charlie challenge. We found this big steep hill right and he's all the way in the lowest gear 42 teeth right there so that's perfect he's set for climbing he's in the highest level of assist i challenged him to climb that without getting out of the saddle but we don't want to hurt your knees buddy so just do what you can because i'm trying to demonstrate the motor and we, we were kind of joking around think what do you think you're gonna make it we'll see <laughs> okay don't take it easy like don't we'll be on camera we'll go wrong. <laughs> okay go wrong gonna end up on america's funniest home videos after this he's got some speed in that approach He's doing fine. I mean, he's taking a little bit of a slant, but this is pretty steep. This is, that's awesome. Woo! <laughs> and now we'll test those brakes on the way down. Yeah, there we go. He's getting out of the saddle. Rock on, dude. He's a mountain bike. <laughs> that was awesome. That Thank was you. That was great. It was really powerful. You were surprised, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so we've got uh, another fairly steep hill here and I'm in the lowest gear. Charlie said there's a nice view up there, so I figured, why not? We're gonna attempt that. Do the one-handed ride thing. Here we go. Oh, putting those fenders to use there with a little bit of wet. I mean, look at that. We're basically riding like straight up this super big hill. No problem, dude. <laughs> Easy. Making it look easy. And there's that castle thing again in the distance. Yeah. Fort Reno. Fort Reno. And then what's out here? What are we looking at? So this is looking out over across the Potomac. So that I believe is all uh, must be on the Virginia side. Huh. So then Virginia, we're kind of looking across the state. But this is the highest, uh, I think the highest point in DC. And we That's climbed it. it. And we climbed it today. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Right up. Bang. I this guy's out in the field driving a little remote control car. Thought that was kind of cool. Here it comes. <laughs> oh boy. That's awesome. You get some air. Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Charlie, this has been so much fun. I appreciate you leading me off on this adventure. We did climb a grassy hill on our way out here and you know made it just fine. Uh, for the full written review, I'll see you guys back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, chime in with your questions and feedback. I'll do my best to answer. Thank you for spending time and letting us demo two bikes. Like that's that's the best, right? We can Absolutely. see them back to back and kind of diff them and get some feedback on what dealers can do. You guys have, you know, you've got a huge shop and I, I'm wishing you, uh, wishing you well this year. Thank you, Court. Thank you a lot. For sure. Love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.